the get the get the juices flowing. And it might only be me and <laughs> this is a birthday party for my life, biggest so photo of me. Friday party vibes, thank God it's Friday. Starting off with a little party vibe. Right a little party vibe. So, um, that'd be me. And we're going to jump to the lesson. Stop the share, share the screen, get to the, get to the good stuff. So, guys, uh, welcome to Brand You. And I'm hoping, if this is your first time, it's understandable. But if it isn't, you should have by now uh, downloaded the this right here, this document. It's an ebook. It's free. You can follow along with this from this. The eight lessons come, and I'm talking about basically every one of these chapters. It's kind of a lesson that I'm going through every week. So if uh, if you guys could come on camera, um, just so I can know who I'm talking to, and then I, we can talk about, um, you know, where you're at in this, if you were able to get the book, and, you know, study any of this before we start, because I, I don't want to have to start from the beginning again, but if nobody has the book, then it's kind of going to be uh, not fruitless, but just difficult to start towards the end. So. Um, I don't know, uh, Sharonda, were you able to get this and read any of it? Sharonda? Okay, she might not be available. Yes, yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, no problem. Yeah, I was multitasking. Yes, I was able to get the book. Okay, and so good. Yeah. You were able to review it. Good to yes. see. Okay. Ernie, how about you? Were you able to, uh, to, um, check out this book and read through it a little bit uh no okay so if you if you haven't you could probably do that now um that's what i was just looking for real quick yeah it's brand slash you dot today let me see if it's actually at the bottom of this thing it might be uh it's like brand with a dash you and then dot today instead of dot com that'll get you there so anybody who hasn't received that yet, you, you might want to do that now, just so that like when we're talking about this, you can follow along. Um, Lee, were you able to um, get a copy of this by any chance uh, before these before today? Sorry, Jason, I haven't been. I I just thought to uh, to um, to upload it now, and I haven't been able to see it yet. Okay, no big deal. Um, this is not working. Just uh, if you want to do that now, and then I'll, I'll breeze through it a little bit, but then I'll, I'll try to get to the, the, the sixth lesson. Now, Rodney, were you were you able to grab that? If not, um, you can just tell me, and then uh, you could take take a second to download it if you're able to. But if not, you can do it later as well. Were you able to, Rodney? Rodney. Guy Rodney, let me see. I guess Rodney can't talk right now. Oh yeah. Hey funny. Jason. Yes. Um, just a quick question. Is there a way to upload that into the meetup uh invitation so that it's like easy for everyone to get to? Because sometimes it gets complicated. So so yeah, I believe the link was in there and then the confirmation email and also the Zoom would have had the link. But I'll actually and I don't know why, because you know maybe it's somewhere in there it's getting dropped. But I made sure I put it in enough places, and I could be wrong. I mean, I you know I don't receive those notifications as such because I'm you know the host, so I don't get them all. But I'll stick it in the chat too if you guys don't you know if that helps. Um, I'll knock that out real quick. Give me a second, chat. Uh, and again, it's not a, it's not that big a deal yet, 
just if you could get it because it's going to make a lot more sense once you once we go through this so it's so so right now um the only one that seems to have gotten it early was uh was where she go? okay so i did request it but i don't see where i received it now that i'm going through the motions again so you would just yeah you would just fill out the form and it should go right to your email whatever email you you um you use it'll it'll just be an email that goes there and then it will be a pdf and then that'll down you know you can just download that and have that ready for okay you. i'm gonna try it again okay no worries so i'm gonna what the heck um sorry uh try to move things around on this uh this all right, so this is this is the, the book. Um, it's a summary of a whole bunch of things that I've kind of developed over the years that have served me well. I write it a little bit, well, let me, I'll just be honest with you. I write to make myself laugh. And maybe that's not for everybody, but it's the only way I could actually put something down on paper sometimes, because if I'm not interested and I get bored pretty quickly and then I kind of walk away. But that is very, indicative of the world we live in i mean if you can't keep someone's attention for more than the first uh, minute then they're going to walk away and if i feel like if i can't get into what i'm writing in the first minute or two then i probably would leave it so in a way i think that helps but that's just my theory there's no science behind it other than that's that's what i'm telling you so um yeah um i'll just breeze through it really quickly and these are the chapter headings so and here's the other thing too um Anybody that needs it, uh, there is a, uh, you know what, I'll find it right now and I'll put it in the link too. You can catch up with all the old classes and if, and if once I have your email, when you download this, I also will do a recording that you can just go back and review. So all the other weeks, except for the well, one I wasn't able to do because we had no power and the other one, nobody really showed up. So it was kind of a waste. But I'll put I'll put all the replays in there and you can kind of go through them and catch up with those and, and you know any questions you had that maybe you didn't take notes on or something. You can go back there and review those as well, so you know just something to think about it, you don't have to get. Um, to you know if you're driving or something worry about taking notes or anything like that it's good to do that, but if you can't um, you can always go to the replays let me i'll find that real quick too. give me one second and i'll stick the. Um, the YouTube. Uh, what's it called. Um, the, the, the playlist uh, there's a youtube playlist for this so let me find it real quick and i'll just stick it in the chat and then you guys can just keep that for later playlist okay. got that and we'll get to this thing because we're answering it now there's the playlist in the chat we have the playlist so you can go back and check out all the goodies from that you may have missed earlier, so you can catch up nice and, nice and easy. Sorry, something's going on crazy with Zoom right now. So hang on for a second. Do we lose the connection? Can you guys hear me okay? Is that? Yes. With me now. Got mm -hmm. it. Something went crazy with Zoom. Sorry about that. Everything started like pooping out on me. So you guys can still see the screen, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so yeah, it, I put I put the playlist inside of the um, 
inside of the chat as well, so you can catch up on all these. And, I'll, and I'll, let me just let me just start going through some of this, and then we'll catch up to where we should be. So, this chapter, what's in a name? I go into how to stand out in this world and why. There's a lot of theories that go behind um, great nicknames. Um, one of the ones that sticks out in my mind is that there was a study by the post office where people would um, look at the wanted posters on the wall and, you know, out of the, the, the eight or so that are on there, seven or whatever, they, they would only ever remember the ones that had like a crazy nickname, like Little Johnny or, or, or Stinky Pete or whatever nicknames they gave for these criminals. They wouldn't remember anything else other than the nickname and the person's face, but it kind of made them stick out in their head. So based off that theory, you know, the the idea of giving yourself a, some sort of nickname, and I like to call it a superhero name, you know, there's there's Clark Kent and then there's Superman, there's Batman and there's Bruce Wayne and then there's Batman. Um, the idea behind it is it's something for you in the beginning to get, to stick out in people's mind, but it also gives you your power, meaning um, in a way, like when you're not feeling up to marketing, let's say, or just not feeling yourself. You're not happy, you're miserable about something, something's going wrong in your life. This is almost like a suit of armor or a cape that you put around yourself to project the confidence that you have, that you want to have. You project, you know, you're, you're basically um, putting on this suit of armor to go out into the world and project the best you upon them. It's not being fake or inauthentic. It's just a way of channeling the good and pushing out the bad and it's you know it, it sort of crystallizes in this this name this business name that you've given yourself this branding name that you've given yourself so i kind of wanted to and i'm not you know i'm not i'm just kind of breezing over it but all this right here is kind of like these pictures when i what i did for myself was i created this this nickname daddy's fast cash because i wanted my business to be about family and fun and for you you're gonna have to decide who you want to be in the real estate world or the you know the back world or or whoever, whatever world you want to do your business in, who do you want to be in that world? What what do you want your business to be about? And then, you know, kind of come up with something based off of that. So for me in, in real estate, uh, it was it was Daddy's Fast Cash because I was I wanted to my business to be about family and fun. I'm a dad, and then Fast Cash was a solution to a problem. Everybody's looking for fast cash to sell their house, so that that became what it was. And from that, I created a um. This first one right here was the first original one. And then the, from there, um, these other characters sort of were like holiday versions. So in my branding, I started creating like other looks for, for him. So that started to help me stand out on my, you know, my, on my social media stuff because I would change. It was the same guy with different outfits on, right? So, and you know, these are all like under here, the different things you can be. We're all more than one dimensional. I want you to actually at least become two, if not three dimensional in your branding. And that part of that is, is this nickname you develop for yourself. So, you know, the nickname thing, you can go through and read it. This is kind of all the effects of, of nicknames, how you can come up with your own. Maybe you have one that you don't like, maybe don't use that one, but maybe there's one that you do like and you can go with that. Um, so how do you, Sadi, how do you, um, how do you get to that is I like to say, Take the things you love, like let's say real estate and for me it was being a dad, but let's say one lady I, I consulted with, she liked wine. So I was like, well, why don't you become the, the, the wine lady? Like you could rate houses like you would a wine. Um, like a sommelier would, you know, this is a white, this is good with fish, this is good. You know, however you kind of discern wine and in your email communications and in your branding, you treat houses like wine. Why? Because the people that you're going to appeal to don't want, aren't wine connoisseurs usually people of means? Don't they usually have money? So you're going to stand out to these people. Not just you're not just an agent. You're not just a wholesaler. You're also somebody they could talk to about wine. So when they're not ready to buy yet, they they subscribe to you and they listen to you because you're talking about something else they like too, which could be wine, or it could be motorcycles, it could be baseball, it could be you could be a big big sports fan. These are all the things you want to take and say, whatever you're passionate about already, and then whatever you are looking to bring to the marketplace or sell, you mush those two together like chocolate and peanut butter, Reese's peanut butter, and you create this new thing that everybody loves. And I'm sorry if you have peanut allergies, but I love peanut butter. So, you know, I use that analogy, but um, 
yeah. So think about that when you come up with your naming process. Catch, try to catch them all simply means that when you get yourself a nickname or, or, or branding name, um, you know, the, the, the real estate soldier, the, um, you know, the, the wine lady, the, whatever you come up with. Um, one of the ladies that was on here, she had one, um, uh, what was it? it had to do with cooking, but we came up with um, a pretty good one. I don't know if you use it or not, but uh, when you come up with your brand, then you're going to want to go on Gmail at least and try to find that uh, email because yes, you're going to want a professional email at some point, but the, the, the beauty of Gmail is like, you know, you can get the YouTube channel from it and that YouTube channel and that Gmail together, it can become your Instagram name, your Facebook name and all that. So with me, my first one was daddy's fast cash. And then I changed it to dad's pads I sort of evolved. And then I evolved to the dad next door. So I was able to grab all of those. And then, you know, if you can't get them exactly, you know, there's always a, you know, whatever your nickname is, dot TV is a good one. Um, because if, especially if you're going to use YouTube, but try to grab as many of those domains, those emails, those Instagram, those Facebook, those social media handles as you can so that when people are looking for you, they can always find you by that. Um, and that's kind of, this kind of goes through why that helps you stand out on people's name in their in their heads a little bit more and then it just makes you easier to find um if your name is really really hard to pronounce and anything like that that's even better way to do it i mean it helps people find you if they can actually spell your name but you know we have a lot of names that are not the easiest to spell anymore so this is a way for you to kind of break through and get notoriety without um killing yourself so I go into these two sources, Fiverr, 99 Designs, when you come up with a, a logo. I would say with Fiverr, it's cheap. I would pick two or three people, maybe even four, have them all do the same, like a version of the design, their version of it, and pick the one you like. Or like me, I did 99 Designs, and this cost may be kind of, uh, it might be more now, but I like them because a lot of people will bid on your job, so you'll get multiple versions for like, multiple concepts and you only have to pay for the one that you pick so when i when i designed this guy I, I helped the guy figure out like i wanted a guy that looked like a mix between ricky martin and dean martin or you know something like that and you know happy go lucky yada 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 he came up with this kind of look and i've kept it through the years and then i ended up you know just always i always just use them again now that i have his information go, go directly to him so you know, once you find a person you like and, and a look like you like, you're going to want to stick with that that visual for as long as you can. And yes, you can update them over time, but like you know, you kind of want to get into people's memories a certain way, uh, colors, styles, things like that. That that means something. So you'll you'll want to pick your brand colors. There's a whole thing on color theory. Um, might actually be in here, but uh, color theory and what colors to use and all that. But um, you know, once you figure that out, then you're on your way. So pick a, pick the right name, pick some colors, fiber designs. These are some of the resources and you can go through the book. Now, this cool story, bro, is basically why you do what you do. I don't know about you, but nobody cares about what Coca-Cola had for breakfast or if their son was sick or anything along those lines, but they certainly would care about maybe you and what happened to your son and your story, right? So People, a lot of people ask, well, should I mix business with personal? And I say, yes. Why? Because they're both you. You are not a corporation. You are not some big entity. You are a person. People want to do business with people. If you don't believe that, just think of the last time you called the utility company, uh, Comcast, Xfinity, Verizon, and you had to go through a phone tree and try to figure out who you wanted to talk to just to get one thing done, right? You don't want that. You want the hookup. You want the person that you know in this place. You want one phone number to ask one question so you get it done quickly and cleanly and you don't want a lot of things in between. When you put up those barriers, you make it difficult for people to want to do business with you. So they figure if you're really that hard to reach or if you're on this pedestal, they're just not going to like be interested in. It's going to take a lot for them to reach out to you. And if you want them to reach out to you and do business, you got to be a real person, right? So what this goes into what my story is and wh how I, you know, even with this misspelling here, how, how I kind of resonate with people um, in my current journey. Like right now, you know, I'm, I'm, I have a real estate background, real estate wholesaler, Airbnb. That's where I was able to retire early. 
but on the way there, I evolved and now I'm doing, um, I'm helping people create tech companies. You know, you, you have an idea, you don't know how to take it from concept to reality, or you don't have the, you know, all the resources or, you know, you have some resources, but you don't know how to do it without going broke. I'm your guy. So you could always come to me and, and go to dadlabs.tech, take you through a process. And then if we want to work with you, we, we simply set up a joint venture. We set up a, 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 an entity and, you know, through that entity, we are now partners. Okay. So that's the simplification of it. But along the way, you're going to evolve, right? So my story, people that, people that know me is I want to be instrumental in the adoption of hundred kids before I die. And I gave myself a hashtag journey to 100. It's for me. But when I share that with people, because that is my why, they suddenly get more interested in seeing me win. Now, I don't know what that's gonna be for you in your life. It could be single mom, it could be cancer survivor, it could be things that you would probably not normally share right off the bat. That's probably the thing that's gonna get you the most fans, the most tribe, the most people who wanna do business with you that get to like, know, and trust you. So it's not a selling tool, it's a relational tool. It's a way for you to get to communicate better with people. You don't want to appeal to everybody. You want to appeal to the people that you can see yourself having longer conversations with. Um, I like to say I like to do business with people that I would hang out in a bar with. And I don't know about you or how you feel or church or wherever you feel the most comfortable. Um, that's who you want to attract. And guess what? Your story is an important way of getting sorting out the people you don't necessarily want to deal with and bring and attracting the people that you would rather do the most business with. And I can't tell you how many times I've had to turn away business or fire people as clients or just potential clients simply because I could already tell from their mannerisms and their social media and the way they, they, they approached things that I didn't want to deal with them. Like I didn't need that kind of money, that stress and it didn't matter how much. Some people say it's, it's, it's business. Well, guess what? If I ever hear someone tell me it's business, not personal, that's the person I don't want to deal with. For me, it's personal, not business. And this is something you guys got to come up with for yourselves. But, you know, just like this, you know, I have, I have a big family. I got six kids. They're going to walk into my Zooms here and there. So be it. That bothers you, then we're probably never going to do good business together. If, excuse me for a second. If you got to go, ask your mom. I need to feed myself. Okay, go. Talk to your mom. I'm busy. All right. Anyway, so that's, uh, that's why your story matters, your big why matters. Now I'm going to start getting into your marketing. Okay, there's a lot of resources on how to market yourself. Um, again, you're not going to want to try to appeal to everybody. I have a weird sense of humor. I like comic books. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm a retired firefighter. I'm a Latino. There's all these pieces to me that I will just include in whatever I do. Books I read. My my take on things. You probably want to stay away from the big ones like politics and religion but at the end of the day if you are really passionate about either one of those things don't be afraid to let people know maybe not every day all day like some people feel like it's their job to do like to inform everybody and educate them that's what nobody is going online that much to be informed and educated they'd rather be entertained or edutained as i like to say so keep a, keep, keep like a an 80 20 90 10 split on that kind of stuff don't be afraid to be the real you is what I'm saying, because people want to know the real you. They, they know that Facebook and social media and all these emails and all these advertisements are meant to craft the message that they think you want them to hear. I say let a little bit of that other stuff bleed through because then they're going to be able to decide and make your job easier if they really want to do business with you. And make, it's a sorting process. It's a qualification process. So don't worry about making everybody happy. Start with yourself. What makes you laugh? What, what do you find funny? Things like that. And then bring that into your communications. Even with selling houses or flipping real estate, I can't tell you the amount of times that people that do for me, okay? So because I, you know, I, still, uh, I still buy things here and there. If I see like a real estate agent that puts a lot of like, I don't know if you know who the broke agent is, but he does a lot of fun and stuff. And people that share that kind of sense of humor, those frustrations, those like weird memes that have to do with real estate, I appreciate that. And so those are the normally the people that I would reach out to first in any way to see about a property that they have versus 
hi, I just joined the Keller Williams team and I got this, you know, red jacket and I get to be on team such and such. And it's just this big clinical like turn off, even if the property itself might be remotely appealing. If I'm looking, if I have to make a decision on who I want to spend my time with any conversation with, it's usually going to be the one that entertained me over the one it can be the same house. If it's the same house, I'm definitely going to the person that has a sense of humor because the person that's just suit and tie, maybe they're more professional, but I don't feel like my experience with them is going to be that pleasant versus the experience I might have with this other person. So definitely develop your, your personality through all this. Remember that you are you would rather have people hate you or like you. You don't want indifference. And what do I mean? Indifference is just that, I don't care. Whatever you say, I don't care. Versus I love what that guy has to say. I love, I love what that person is about. And the alternate was I hate what that person's about because either one of those things is gonna get comments and activity that's gonna benefit you anyway. So there's a saying, you know, if you don't stand in the middle of the road because you're gonna get hit by the car, right? Get to one side or the other side of the road Standing in the middle, you're just going to get hit by the car. In this case, you're just going to be ignored by everybody. So if you want to get engagement, which is what you want from anything that you do, you know, like I think that, what's the phrase? Um, all all um, publicity is good publicity. Well, the same thing. All activity is good activity. All engagement is good engagement, no matter how you look at it. Even if sometimes people are nasty and trolls and they, you know, they have bad comments, you just... You roll with it. And if you get mad, so be it. Just press a button and, and flame them if you have to. Don't be afraid to, to strike back a, 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 if you need to, too, if you feel the need to do that. Like, we're all human beings. And showing your human side does tend to engage more fans. That's what you want. These two books, so that, well, A Thousand True Fans right here. And, you know, there's a link. And it, it's an article I think everybody should read so that you can kind of uh, get the concept between going deep instead of going broad and then jab jab right hook i think is free download still works so you can get that book and these are how to attract people through social media and through your marketing so definitely check those out um again if you have the book uh, go to the chat uh you can download the book and then also uh, the link there for the, the these videos um to to re-review this stuff uh let me see so that's that chat. Now, another, this was um, more updated stuff, right? So beginner's tools and tricks. I don't think, I don't know if Bitmoji still exists, but we have those um, Facebook, excuse me, avatars. And I think most people's phones now have a way to make the little cartoon icons of themselves. Don't be afraid to use that. That shows your personal side. Um, Here's another one, Meme Maker. If you want to, you know, if you have more of a sense of humor or you just want some content, you can go on there and grab, you know, things that you find amusing and post them. Um, again, edutainment. Sometimes it's just straight ed entertainment and sometimes there's a little educational value with it. When I post things, I like to add a little something to it or remix it or asking a, asking a question if, if, you know, to get engagement. Because likes don't really do anything for you, but the comments and the shares, that kind of does something for you. So. Don't just post stuff if you can actually put a question behind it. Even if you can bring it around to what your business is and frame it in such a way that it refers to your business, even if it's ab in an abstract sort of way, those are always the things that kind of really get people thinking and that's what you want. Um, Ripple was a nice way to make videos on your phone. I think they started charging for it. Um, a new maker. Canva is probably the most useful tool you can get, even the free version. Although I would say if you pay for the yearly one, it's it's worth it because you can do like little five second videos for Instagram. It does. There's a lot of tools in the free one that are just like so much. So I would say Canva is like your personal brand's best friend. You can set up templates on there. You can find a lot of quick, cool ideas to post things with visually like it will definitely help you and your brand as long as and even inside there you can save your brand colors so if you want to make like anything colorful you can save those colors and it will automatically bring those back to your palette and you can you know put quotes like you know inspirational quotes you might find books you read stuff like that um that's a quick and easy way to do it and you can actually use it on your phone too 
Uh, let me see. And then these were just examples of stuff that got a lot of um, engagement at the time. I also use this app called iFunny when I'm looking for stuff, funny stuff that, you know, just random stuff. Um, go on there and grab stuff. It, it's kind of one of my secret weapons. So, and then you know, you'll know who your tribe is by the ones who react to this stuff. So those are the people that you want to start to set up the relationship with, the people that are engaging with your stuff. And it's, it doesn't hurt. Like I say with everything, like, like when you're trying to engage people online, like always be a fan first. Like if you like them, comment on your post first. Like, hey, that's really fun. Or I love this or share it. You don't have to be a, you gotta call it a suck up, but definitely, you know, chime in and always do a lot of that stuff before you ask them for anything. Hey, you know, there's nothing worse than the old LinkedIn or even Facebook. Like, hey, I see, uh, are you open to um, hearing new opportunities? Or are you, um, do you have an open mind or just, out of the blue, random questions like that, I already know they're setting you up for a sale, right? So before you go deep and trying to start a relationship with a cash buyer or a seller or anybody, like go and engage on their stuff first if you can, whether it be on Instagram, Facebook, anywhere, because opening that door in the correct manner is going to go a lot farther for your relationship than just randomly hitting up 20 people a day because that's the limit and saying, hi, are you interested in this? It's like, if I was interested in that, then I would have contacted you, right? So always ask a question to your audience. Hey, is anybody, you know, what do you think about this? Or what's your opinion about this? Not, hey, are you interested? Ask for an opinion, ask for insight, ask for what would you do? And then the people that respond to that, you can continue the conversation. But if they don't, let it be. I mean, this is just a natural way of reaching out to people through social media. Um, here are those resources, how to use hashtags, free branding tools list. Okay. Um, this is actually where we're supposed to be chapter six. Um, again, I went through this because a lot of people didn't read yet. So I'm gonna catch you up. So this is how to, this is exactly what I was just talking about, how to deal with leads, right? How to attract them and how to carry on with them. So obviously there's social media and then there's, you know, you can create Google forms real easy and cheap, but if you really want to get more, um, you know, organized so that you can maximize your time and your impact, you're definitely going to need some kind of an email um, collector, you know, Aweber, MailChimp or Common, GrooveMail, GrooveFunnels I like because it comes like so mail so mailchimp has a lot of limits on it now but you can like anything you want to do extra like create like lead pages inside of it and all that like like squeeze pages it was free but then they like, you know they try to upsell you so you're gonna pay for something here but in the beginning like free mailchimp is good enough and then groove funnels has three free capture pages and then you know you could use that with mailchimp that like one two punch right there with um, the mail and the, the lead pages. Like, for example, if you got this book, that was a lead page that I set up to send you a PDF form, which was this book. And now I have all your email addresses, not to spam you, but just to notify you when another class is coming up and also to give you um, the, uh, the link for the, for the video. And that's it. And then, you know, you can always unsubscribe if you're tired of it, but I don't really market to you guys yet because you're all part of Arcus Alchemist Nation, you know, so we're all together. So there's no really no need for me to do that. Now, if I had an offer that I wanted to say, hey, you know, guys, are you interested in this since you're into, into branding? And that could be a real estate offer and all that. I would ask you first, but again, I'm trying to keep it to the point of like, you're here for this. So this is what you're going to get 99% of the information about me. But in the same vein, when you create a list for real estate or any business, you're going to keep it on that one topic. But, you know, every once in a while, you may have an offer they might want to hear about. Like, here's a free whole, here's a free wholesaling class, or here's a resource about real estate, or here's a free book that has to do with whatever we're talking about here. Just know that it's not to just have a list of emails to just send them random offers. Like, hey, I just joined this MLM, you know, 
are you interested? Like, yeah, I mean, if they, if, if whatever you're talking about might relate to that, like financial literacy, um, here's, you know, a deal where they, they have, um, you know, how to pay your mortgage down in, in, in eight years instead of 30 years, right? So you might be interested in that. Just make sure like, you know, you protect this list that you created because that's your relationships. And all you got to do is start being Mr. Spam to piss them off. And then they don't want to listen to you any, ever again, because you kind of, what's the word I'm looking for? You kind of uh, soured the relationship, right? So remember your place in all this. You are there to, right now, you're just, you're there to serve them. Not, they're not there to serve you. So keep that in mind as, as you approach these relationships. Um, I just referred to lead pages. You got to see a version of that with the brand you today is what I put together. Um, these things have a lot of templates, so you don't have to go getting crazy like me. And I, I like to design my stuff because I have fun doing that. That's kind of like my thing, comic books and, and, and branding and design. But you don't have to worry about all that because a lot of these things have templates and a lot of things, you know, you can set up in 15 minutes and be ready to go with what's already in there. So don't let the technology phase you is what I'm basically trying to say. Um, you have, you know, click, like if you have the book, these are all examples for you to look at. Um, within it with Groove Funnels. I use Groove Funnels pretty heavy right now because there's a lot of things in it. So if you feel like that might be the way, then just feel free to click on that and take advantage of. I want to say they have a they have a they have a free version of it. Uh, you get up to three squeeze pages and a bunch of other stuff. So check that definitely check that out. Earl Cloakers. Um, when you get these links, sometimes they're freaking so long that like it's really hard to send people like to your, let's say your website is, I don't know, something super long. What would be a super long one? Like Airbnb host of Philadelphia.com. That's not that bad, but like maybe it's too long for like a text or something. So you have bit.ly and tiny CC for anything that's like a two line kind of URL with a lot of random letters and numbers in it that makes no sense to anybody that's hard for you to remember, you can use these tools to make them really nice and small. Even Google has a free version of them, but it's kind of buried. It's really not that easy to find. So I like these two because they're easy to just find online and it keeps a record of them and then you can shorten them. Tiny, you can do, Tiny CC I like because you don't, you can do like um, easy to remember ones without them trying to charge you. Bitly, and they call those um, branded, links or customizable links. Bitly won't let you do it for free anymore, but Tiny will. So Tiny, like you wanted to say, Tiny CC, Brenda's deal. And you can make that up. And then like, anytime anybody asks you or Brenda, Brenda, uh, Brenda's investors or investors, you know, something investors, something shorter for easy to remember, you can take a long URL or something that may be like a, a, like a template from somewhere else that you might be using make it nice and small. And the good thing is you can go in there and see how many people you track the links and how many people clicked on it and all that. So you can make up all these different sort of little URLs. You can also do this in Google for free, but I like tiny because it's easy to remember, get on there, click on it and you're, and you're not buried in a lot of menus. So something to think about, it's a nice tool for you to track what you do. Direct mail. Um, some point you're gonna be mailing people stuff. Um, Big guy, you know, click to mail, y'all order letters.com, you know, hey, I want to buy your house. Um, are you selling? Yada, yada. Like, these are kind of some of the services that I've used before. Um, thanks, IO, I, I really dig because you can customize everything and you can actually do one offs. So, what's cool about that is they actually, you know, they have the handwriting fonts and they have um, a lot of, it's a lot of power and in tracking in thanks, IO. So, you might want to check that one out. Um, it's really cool. My friend actually created it. So texting campaigns, there's a lot of programs out there. Some you probably heard of and others, maybe not. I like text magic and there's actually another one, a friend of mine created, which is very similar. The reason being is the list that you can create from it. So you're not just texting random people, random stuff. You, you, you have a list. They can opt in. For example, if you want to say, uh, if you have a special deal, like free book, you can create like a, um, a tagline that says free book and they can text that to your number and then they would get like a link to the free book, it's automated. And then they also go on a special list. So you would know just like with email lists, anybody that is tagged with that particular thing, you can communicate really just with those people and not bother people with the wrong deal. 
another way, like for example, if you're an investor and you're selling, you know, wholesale deals, maybe you have them text the zip code. And then whenever you have something in that zip code, all those people that signed up with that zip code are the only ones that get your text. And it also, you know, it helps you to make your list much more effective, your communications and not be a spammer. So that's a tool. Text magic is in there. Um, the link is in there. And I, I think that's all you need to know about that. Um, you can create your own app. Um, here is one. It's a, it's like a business card. You can text it to people and all your business, all your information's in there. So they can get to your email, your website, your Instagram. It's all in one place. So there's a bunch of buttons. In fact, let me show you what it looks like. Um, let's see. Okay. So, you know, you get a page like that, if you can see, and it's just a bunch of buttons, but it makes life simpler when you have a lot to offer and you know they want to call you about title or they want, like you can have like a whole a button there that's like free resources and so instead of people asking you like what title agency do you use and, and what's a good mortgage broker and this and that you can just have buttons for those people or a, a whole resource list for those people so you're giving them a lot of value in a nice little small package and that's the um now this 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 app link is wrong anymore but anyway um, yeah, so you can, you can create an app like that to get in people's minds and be in their phones, which is, you know, everybody's in their phones these days. So you're, you're in the right place. Um, and that's it for today. These are, are some of the tools that can help you organize and monetize all these sort of, uh, your, all your business stuff. And with that, are there, we're done chapter six. So are there any questions, anything you guys want to talk about real quick. Jason, this was awesome. I, you just gave us a wealth of information that <laughs> not being very technically oriented. I mean, I just, this is amazing stuff. Thank you so much. That's, I'm glad, I'm glad you appreciated it. It's, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, like I said, like I said, it might be a little bit crazy in the book, but I try to make it as simple as possible and entertaining as possible. So no, it really is. I love it. I like, I like your style a lot. And, um, you know, the thing about picking up, um, I guess, a cartoon character is interesting because you developed it, like you said, a combination of who were those two people, Dean Martin and who else? <laughs> I said Dean Martin, Dean Martin and Ricky Martin. So Ricky, and Ricky Martin, Martin. Martin. <laughs> <laughs> like, like a dancer, but, you know, he's smooth and suave and Dean Martin was like this, you know, the the drink swelling kind of like, you know, smooth guy too. So it's a little weird, weird combination, I know, but that's kind of what came up in my head, so. Yeah. No, but that's great. And then who created the cartoon for you? So once I got the look, well, once I got the vibe down I wanted, then I kind of, when you, when you work with someone in like one of these designers, you know, you, you start to look at what they've already done and then say like, I like that character style. So, you know, here's what I look like, you know, draw a caricature of that or sh draw just like that, but then put some sunglasses on him and make his hair stick up and give him like a little scarf. So, so this original one, this orange with the brown suit and the little scarf was my version of like, you know, this um, bon vivant kind of wholesaler, daddy's fast cash. In my head, he's a superhero. In fact, behind that, I'm not in the office now, but if you check out the background of my office and some of the other videos i basically created a whole cartoon family of real estate people around it but this was for me like i i did it for fun and then i mm -hmm. actually started using it but that me creating that story people started to remember it more because it's like it's kind of wacky but like who else does that right so for me because like i told you before take what you're passionate about and mix it in with whatever your business is that was mm -hmm. just me experimenting but that experiment yielded a lot of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Social currency and, and story currency and made me stand out because nobody puts that much thought into these things. I mean, they do if it's a video game or if they're creating a comic book or a book. But in my head, I was because I think like that. I think, okay, how do I take this from one dimension into another dimension into another dimension? And then how do I, how do I create 
more to the story so that people are like, I want to hear what happens next, or I want to meet that character. And so seven other characters, actually 10 characters evolved from this. Some of the other ones kind of fell to the wayside, but I just think like that, and you might too. So what I'm showing you here on the screen is the evolution of things, because one was just simply a wholesaler, and then the next became like the person who, you know, you stay in their properties. And then the last became more universal, where it was kind of like, no, I'm talking to all dads, not just daddy's fast cash or dad's pads or real estate people. It's like all the dads can be a version of this. And, and that's kind of the, the, the track I'm on now. But if you've seen Pokemon, you know, you start out with this character Mama, and then daddy, he evolves into these, other, <laughs> into these <laughs> other characters. So, and yeah, I mean, you know, I'm around kids 99% of the time. So of course I'm going to speak in cartoon language and cartoon characters is part of my DNA now. So <laughs> well, thank you for that, Lee. Um, did anybody have any other thoughts or questions? Maybe something like something you want me to listen to as far as like an idea you had and what do I think of it in your branding? Because pretty good at that. Um, I, I usually help people get through those. In fact, I've had people pay me lots of money to help them get through those. So take advantage of it for the next 10 minutes. If, if you got my ear, I can kind of give you some ideas on how to craft your brand a little bit better. So let me ask you something, Jason. I, I joined um, a, a company that sells a medical device. And what I did was I had, I'm sorry, I can't come on live because um, I'm <laughs> in the middle of doing three things. <laughs> so um, so what I did was I branded myself as ultimate wellness and health. And this has nothing to do with real estate because I'm a realtor as well, but I pivoted and because uh, I found this medical device that really helped me. And then um, I didn't brand myself as ultimate wellness and health because the company that I was selling for was already B B Beamer, B-E-M-E-R. They were branding themselves. So I had a conflict on how I could brand myself through Beamer because I was restricted with, you know, their protocol with, um, they had uh, global patents on their product. And, you know, I was, I found it hard to incorporate their branding into mine. So that's where I've been stuck with branding myself. Do you ever come across that when someone has um, like a corporate logo that they have to deal with incorporating it into their branding? So yeah, I dealt with that a little bit with this company called Solave. And what I ended up doing was I created a character outside. Oh, the phone's breaking up, I can't hear you. I'm sorry, um, is this okay? Yeah, I hear you. Okay. I, I created a character called Soul, which was like a play off of Solo Day. And I, and I did dance around that a little bit myself. So I know what you're talking about. Um, what else do you do? What are, the, what are the passions do you have that you can kind of integrate into this? So I owned a kitchen and bath business um, for many years. I haven't done that in, in quite a while. Um, I'm into doing that uh, in des not designing myself, but helping people design and incorporate different ideas into the design of their kitchen. Um, Cause I'm pretty creative when it comes to that. Uh, you know, I, I don't have a degree in architecture or engineering but I kind of designed and planned and laid out my entire basement in my home that I finished and I designed a deck with a jacuzzi outdoors. So like, I'm pretty good with that kind of stuff. I rehabbed a house and I totally redesigned it without an architect. And, uh, you know, everything went well with it. So what, what I, I guess your question is, what else do I do? Um, I kind of haven't focused on one thing that I want to like portray myself as. So your name, if it's, if it's, if I'm accurate, you, d you like design, you dig design, correct? I mean, that sounds like what you do. Uh-huh. Okay. So Della Monica Designs is not a bad idea. Now, how does that how does that play into the medical device field? So what kind of medical devices are we talking about? 
It's, it's a couple of different devices. It's a um, PEMF device, pulse electromagnetic fields. Um, Beamer is an acronym. It's bioelectromagnetic energy regulation. So what it does is it increases blood flow. It uh, reduces inflammation. And it's a European product. It's uh, based out of Liechtenstein in near Germany. And uh, it's becoming more and more popular in the States now because the FDA just upgraded our class two uh, designation so that doctors are more open to using it in their practices. So I've been learning about that because I have not been in the medical field ever before. But because of the injury I had, I've been learning a lot about how it helps people. And I just thought I'd join the company and share it with people if they ever needed anything alternatively to painkillers, because I know too many people that have gotten destroyed on painkillers with, so, you know. So, so you, are, you are also a customer of this thing, correct? Yes. Like you use it, okay. Um, so I would, I would look at myself like a TV show, right? And I would say, okay, who, what do people like know me for? Like when I, when I talk about things, and like I said, passion, right? So your design on your house and, and maybe some other things can kind of become your, your, your value add to the world. Now, keep in mind, that doesn't mean you have to be, um, you know, uh, something on the scale of like a home improvement show or anything like that, but like you're your own show, right? So you can, you can just use this as like, hey, this is your creative outlet. But inside of that, you can talk about your life. So Delamonica De De Monica Designs doesn't necessarily just mean designing furniture or designing spaces. It's designing your life. And you're designing a life that revolves around pain management, right? So maybe some of the design can be like, I designed this um, this way because, you know, health-wise, it's better. Right, and then you can, you know, you can you can talk about the Beamer and how you implement it into your lifestyle. It, you can make it a design element. I mean, there, there's some. I would play with that a little bit, but I mean, do you see how what yeah, I'm saying is like? I don't have mm -hmm. a You see how I'm, I'm not like putting it right. I'm not nailing it. I'm not you're not selling anything. You're just talking about how it improves your life in in certain ways, and and you're just bringing it into your life. That might be a way. Now, you know, obviously it's a business and you're going to want to uh, find a way to monetize it. But like with anything, you know, you should be giving eight to nine times the amount of value and, and entertain like entertainment or education and maybe 10% talking about sales. Like people are going to want to know how you make money when they're interested in you. They don't care how you make money if they're not interested in you. Yeah, in my so, so mm -hmm. we'll tell you yeah. now, I don't have your time. Mommy won't get, and mommy don't know where they could be. Okay, I don't know. Go check the sofa. And I'm almost okay. there. So don't come up. All right. Um, sorry about that. Um, my back is my back went out um yesterday morning, and I'm trying to sit somewhere that's more relaxing than my office. So. So you need me. a beamer. <laughs> yeah, it's like you know, it's, it sounds like it's one of those like stem stem uh stem units that kind of no it's actually very passive it's not a, it's not a tens unit or, or stem or anything like that you don't even feel it it's just kind of like some people feel a tingling because it enhances blood flow some people feel some warmth in their bodies and some people just feel uh nothing but better because in an eight minute session eight to ten minutes possibly 20 depending on the extent of the injury um, there's different modalities in the unit, so you can apply it differently to all body parts. And um, it's it's a little deeper than what I'm just giving you a brief explanation. Well, but well, well, blood flow is obviously gonna anything that in uh, I guess gets your circulation up is gonna help you heal quicker. So that's okay. I get that. Yeah, um, it's passive though. What happens is is it like a blanket it, of some it, kind? Yeah, it's a it's like a yoga mat. Okay. We have right now we have a, it's a yoga mat that you lay on and the coils are in the, the mat. Um, the technology is actually uh, it's it's incorporated into the NASA spacesuits because it helps people, astronauts, people um, get back into the Earth's atmosphere 
easier going from space in the gravitational pull. Uh, but I, does I, I'll tell you what, does any, so there's, you, you have a lot of education around it, right? But does, is there anybody out there like making videos of places that like ways, you know, conditions or things of using it? Like you oh, kind of sure. just laid yeah. it out so yourself. The, yes. So what happens is the company has a whole bunch of uh, videos that they produce because they um, have marketing materials. So we have a lot of Olympic athletes that use it. Um, it's kind of like a secret weapon for people because they can't take medication, steroids and things like that. So it actually helps them with their recovery time and uh, it enhances their performance. So it's kind of like one of their best kept secrets. We have a lot of um, like, um, what's her name? Uh, Muhammad Ali's daughter, I can't think of her name right now. Tatiana uh, Ali. Uh, the athlete, Tat she's the boxer. Tatiana. Yeah. Tatiana. yeah. So, yeah, so she's. Huh? I think she was just. Okay. Oh, Layla. 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 That's right. Yes, you got it. That's her name. Yes. So Tatiana she's... was Fresh Prince. I forgot. <laughs> yeah, no, so she's, she was an ambassador, so to speak, sponsoring the product because she's used it. Um, there's a lot of different celebrities, not just celebrities, but pro athletes that in any, in any field that have used it. And there's also an equine unit that we use for the horse community. There but, you go. Uh, so, so what made you care about it other than money? What made you care about this thing? Because you got to really dig into that. Like the thing about celebrity endorsements is like, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Why? Because I don't know them. I have no relationship with them unless I'm a boxer you know, or a fan of some kind, it doesn't do anything for me. But now you said the equine community, right? So yeah. I'm just trying to tie you into like how people are going to get interested in you as your niche has to be really tight. And if you're into the equine community, like you should really double down, like design, everybody does design stuff. So I was trying to, you know, I was just trying to, to spitball mm -hmm. on the But if you have a specific use like that, yeah. like people that ride horses, they need this, it helps them you know, on their back blah, blah, blah. and you just he hit heavy on that. And you just talk about like, if you're in that community, things that relate to those people and just did that only, you probably, mm -hmm. it might take a little while, but you then become the only person doing that or the one, the only person they know doing that. Remember that you don't have to be the only person. You just gotta be the only person they know and care about, right? Cause everybody knows a boxer probably in their family but that's probably the only boxer they care about unless it's like mike tyson or somebody famous so just remember that and same thing with sports figures and all that like that's great but nobody cares about those people they care about what you're talking about right then and there and mm -hmm. you just need to double down on that so maybe you know that making videos about horse riding and then like treating yourself after for comfort so that your back doesn't hurt so much or whatever body part like that could be it mm -hmm. and it doesn't have to be corporate it could be right off of your phone like mm -hmm. you know i understand sure. the idea i i under the now i understand the idea because it's corporate that there's mm -hmm. legal right you got to go through legal and you can't mm -hmm. promise anything it's mm -hmm. all about how you use it for yourself in that community mm -hmm. and you're not a doctor hey i'm not a doctor i'm just telling you like i really like it for this reason i use it for this reason it gives me it gives me um you know comfort and so, you know, if you're looking for a solution, like the one I found, you know, feel free to hit me up. Um, also right. do your research, but like that people can, nobody can say anything about that in corporate because this is you using it for your own personal use and recording it. Sure, versus... yeah, no, I have, I have done that because I've done, I've sponsored events, you know, I've done trade shows with it and um, I videotaped a couple of people you know, this is, and then this only started from July of 2019. And then we hit a pandemic like six months, eight months later. So I've, you know, I've been a little bit out of the loop because of the pandemic, but with, um, with what the company's been doing behind the scenes while, you know, everyone's trying to figure out if we're going to catch a virus or not, you know, they've, they've been doing a lot more work for us at marketing materials. My main concern is how to market me as the beamer girl, you know, and well, or. I, I, would, I would just say this, right? Pers the thing about personal branding, you should 
remember at the core is this. You're the brand, not the product. So work on your own brand before the product mm -hmm. because what happens if you decide to part ways with Beamer? Mm -hmm. Then you have no more identity in the world, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. why I was saying Della Monica design, design or, or just something, something with your name in it mm -hmm. and your hobbies as the, so what I'm looking for, the, the, the package that people subscribe to and whatever you bring into that package is not you, but it's something that you use, which would interest them the same way a cook or Martha Stewart might use some kind of um, product on their show. The brand is Martha Stewart. She's just showcasing something else. That's what you really want because should you want to leave that company for any reason because it's, you know, corporations are not loyal to anybody at all other than themselves. Mm -hmm. That's why they have, you know, um, they have the lawyers, they have everybody because if they have to cut you off, and I've seen it a hundred times, happened to my, my, a good friend of mine, Brian, where he was in one company uh, with me, real estate, and then he, he had this other, this, this, this health product, but they cut him off from the real estate company, which had, it was, was not even a conflict of interest because they were like, you can't represent us and that. You can't do two. Like, sure, I, I can't, I can't invest in real estate and care about my health and share that with people. So <laughs> that's his crazy. brand, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. almost like as if they think they own you. That's not good. That's why I'm trying to tell you, if you're gonna invest in a brand and personal brand, you need to de think deeper and start going into like the, the things nobody can take away from you, mm -hmm. the expertise you have in other areas that nobody can like take away from you and then bring these products into your world instead of revolving your world around these products. Because just like me with real estate, I was a wholesaler and then I took me and I evolved into an Airbnb brand and that worked fine because I mm -hmm. was the product, not the real estate. And then mm -hmm. into this other thing with tech, I move with it. I move where I want to go. And that's what I'll, everybody watching this should think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In, in, in anything you do, yeah. you're the brand, mm -hmm. right? Because exactly. then you get to move around with it as, and if the brand, if the product fails you, which they more times than not will, then you get to move on and, and, and evolve without losing everything behind that particular brand because, oh, you, you know, follow corporate and da, 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 da. It's like, yeah, you might be a little bit of a black sheep to them and they might have to keep warning you. But at the end of the day, just like an employee, you're at the mercy of the employer. And if they are your employer and that brand is like you're hanging your hat heavy on that one thing, when they yank it from you, you're gone too. So, all right. Now I get up. it. Yeah. yeah now I understand. Yep. Yeah. So that's that's awesome. Thank you for that advice. It's funny because you know, like I, I was told by the mentors in my business, you know, before you have to ask for for uh, how did he say? Don't don't uh, ask for ask, permission. Yeah, don't ask, ask for forgiveness. Exactly. <laughs> that's what you do. And yeah. it, unfortunately, that's the way of the world because we just live in a world full of everybody trying to cover their ass more than they are actually trying to provide value. But, right. Um, you know, that's where we're at. So you just have to learn how to dance and dance around that and adapt. But, you know, this is the way. So, yeah. So it, this actual product and I'm not trying to sell it here on on your on your broadcast here, but it's actually affiliate marketing. Of course. So there's an incentive for an additional stream of income for me to help other people to train them on how to use the device and, you know, use it for themselves in their home. And instead of going out to, you know, a doctor's office and getting the treatments, more or less like if you go to a chiropractor, you get the TENS unit, you can use it at home and anybody in the house can use it. So it's like an investment for your family, not for you just one person. Because people have recovered from a lot of different injuries. You know, even their animals have recovered from using it uh, because, you know, pets, dogs, cats. Any but that's what I'm trying to say. You should become the expert in that field for... Because, okay, so it's affiliate marketing and affiliate marketing is great. I do a little bit of it. In fact, inside that, that workshop, some of those are affiliate links, right? So no big deal. But mm -hmm. it has to be congruent with who you are. So if you become this uh, kinest kinesthetic wellness expert, let's call it, because that's like all, all body movements, then if you were to say, ha have this Beamer, right, as part of your arsenal of products that you could offer, 
and maybe you you get deep into like you know uh, what's the what is, what is it like um alternative medicines so there, there's some herbal product that you really love now a salve of some kind right maybe for migraines like you become this expert in pain management in a in a holistic way so that mm -hmm. all your affiliated products it's not just one it's multiple but they right. all revolve around this theme of holistic or alternative medicine then you get really good at that you can speak on that all day it sounds like and not just rehash um, other people's propaganda i want to put it that way because that's what it sounds like whenever they sure. hit you with their benefits like we get it i don't care i want to hear from somebody using it not from somebody trying to sell it so the point is whatever you use you find a way to affiliate market that something you really love maybe they don't even have an affiliate market yet like there's there's so many things out there that if you become uh, an expert or, or just an authority in that you'll find that they don't even have a spokesperson for it or an affiliate marketing that you can create your own deal with those people and add that to what you're already doing. So let's say the Beamer is like a $5,000 product. Well, nobody really wants to dump that kind of money into something that takes that long to get back. But then you have all these like little things, like maybe you have this ebook like you can create a free ebook on how to create how to use the beamer blanket with horses and you can take some or, or horse riders or equine you can take a little piece of all that information that they throw you in corporate rework it to make to to your market and use that as a um they call it a a, a lead magnet right and that like the same way you downloaded this book from a from a from a website they can download it. And now you have a list of those people that are interested specifically in that stuff. And you can create a whole community around that, a Facebook, something really, really, really niche down. And mm -hmm. then from, from that, it can be females between the ages of 35 and 55 that are into, um, you know, into horses or, or tra um, training that have pain issues. Like just keep going deeper and deeper and write to like one or two people in that, that, that are like you in that field. Like you're writing just to those people, make that into something and then put that out there because believe it or not, there's people that might not fit that specifically, but they mm -hmm. like, they, they fit enough of it to be like, well, that could be useful to me and they'll mm -hmm. get it. And that's yeah. how you can broaden your market, but you become such, you're, you now, you sniper shot these people. You, you were a sniper with it. So becoming so targeted, makes you able to open up your market in the way that you like versus the way that they've given you that you can try this and you can try that and you can try this mm -hmm. and you can try that. And then you're just this, this, this mush of information that like, I get it. You want to be the Swiss army knife for everybody. But sometimes mm -hmm. people just want a corkscrew for their wine. They don't need the knife. <laughs> they don't need the, all that right. other stuff. They just need the corkscrew. So just right. think of yourself that like you're going to be the corkscrew for this one thing. And then mm -hmm. yes, can you use a can you use a, a corkscrew for other things? Yeah, and, not, and some of them are probably not nice. I mean, you could probably kill somebody and with a corkscrew if you really wanted to. But we're not going there. We're just saying like, you just got to be the corkscrew for these people, and then I you like can kind of branch idea. out. Yeah, I'm going to become the corkscrew uh, <laughs> healer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like go really deep first, and then pile onto it once you get that really deep, like that, that you get that pinpoint accuracy. You can right. branch out from there, but I'll, you'll be amazed how many things you can go on to like, what is it? Um, there's affiliate marketplaces, uh, Warrior Forum, and there's a couple others where you can go on there and you can find products very niche down like that, that you can add on. Once mm -hmm. the people know you for that one thing, that's how affiliate marketing works. Like you're an expert in email, but like people need lead pages. So you're like, well, take my email course and I'll get you a, 30% off deal for this lead page thing. And now that's mm -hmm. how you're affiliate marketing because you're not providing them with that service. You just know they need it because you needed it. So you just find the stuff you need and pack, put it onto the stuff that you already have. Right. And that's how you grow your affiliate market. But you got to be really known. You got to be the court group first before you can become the Swiss Army. Is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Thank you for that. Yeah, thank you so much. Really good, good stuff. You're great. You really know your stuff. Um, Sharonda, before she takes off, uh, question, how do I merge an old logo with a new one? So, because I got to wrap this up. Um, start with what, all right, get, 
it could go okay there's a couple ways you can go you can go to um figuring out your colors first right and do an update and maybe like if your colors were like silver and gray and all that, like maybe do a colorful update and ask for some things. So you could you could do an upgrade through color scheme and then just get those down. Or you can do a contest where you can say to people, um, here's my old logo. I think it needs an update. What do you think? What what would you change about it? And maybe, you know, do a survey about it. Like get some ideas from social media first. I think okay. it needs an update. It needs a refresher, right? And Get some from then. And then also, like I said, take it to Fiverr or even 99designs and tell people you can post a job on Fiverr. I need an update to this logo. Um, you know, I'm looking to do this and this, but I'm open to suggestions. And people will respond to you. And like I said, the cheap way. So take a survey first. What's cool about um, 99designs, it does give you, and it's more expensive, but it does give you a way for people to weigh in on the logos they like i think they need mm -hmm. a page and if you have five or six logos that you really like or, or however many su submit it you can have people vote that way or just narrow it down to your one or two that you really like or you okay. can kind of kind of do the reverse with fiverr where you can just take your logo give it to three or four people tell them to give you an idea of what you know of uh you know do the cheapest one like i need to update this logo what would you suggest and do a $5 update, five ten dollar update of what that is and just do it until you get a lot of them there and then just pick one you like more and just have them keep fixing it until you get it where you want. I mean, those are kind of the two ways I would take it. Okay. Now, currently, um, the logo, uh, because I'm in wholesaling, so it's currently has three houses and their arms wrapped around the houses because um, mm -hmm. my, my, my whole thing is, well, it's called Realty Resolutions. And the tag is we're here to provide solutions. And so um, it's about helping people understand that they have options during that crisis time. So why don't you change it to options are us or solutions okay. are us, it's simpler, right? Okay. So as, as your, like your tagline. Okay. Options, options are us. Um, well, don't say options because to real estate people, options means like lease options and stuff. Yeah. Like that. So mm -hmm. sol solutions are us or, or, or you know, that, I mean, people get it. Toys are us, cars are us, solutions are us. It's a okay. little long. It's a little long, but you know, um, yeah, you know, you get what I mean. I'm just trying to start right. the le the least the less words the better. If okay. you can get something down to two, two to three words as your sales, like your 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 value proposition, mm -hmm. it's gonna stick. Um, you know, over three words, they say people start to lose it. Forget okay. it. I think after seven words, forget. Like nobody's gonna remember you. Okay. So, so solutions are us, and then um, I, I will play with that. Three okay. houses. Um, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what the purpose of three houses is, unless, unless it was just to kind of like stretch out the the logo for to fit with all the words on there. Um, yeah, 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 kind of, kind of so. And so, I mean, just piggybacking off of your superhero idea, I got the idea of um, having a woman, like a superhero with two R's on her chest and, you know, maybe having her like encase the houses or, you know, kind of something like that. I don't know if that's probably too complicated or have them just no. use it in marketing or get, I'm just kind of wrapping my head around how can I kind of add that superhero aspect. So first of all, what are your colors? The colors currently are black, gold, and silver. So maybe move to pink, silver, and black or white. Like, like I would say pink and silver. I okay. want you to go, I want you to go, I want you to decide on a gender. Not that okay. nobody will not. Okay, so hear me out. Not okay. that anybody's going to. You're just going to build up your 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 tribe of women that will want to work with you more. Because right okay. now you're just a company. Could be a mm -hmm. man, could be a woman. I don't know. Why mm -hmm. would I put it more? When you go more feminine, I know that you're about woman empowerment. Like you're proud of being a woman. So okay. that. That makes me decide a little bit more about you. Now, as a man, I may be like, well, I feel like, do I feel like a dealing with a man or a woman? I don't know. Let me look at this logo. One is a house, one is a superhero 
lady. Hmm, I dig comic books more. I'm probably going to go to the superhero house lady because house, there's a million other house people out there. This one's a little different. Do you see how I start to kind of, and this is just me, how mm -hmm. people start to decide and you got to get, you got to narrow down and give them more things to decide about. The same way I told Lee, be the corkscrew, like be the super mom, to see, be the super house mom, like be okay. with pink and celebrate pink and like T-Mobile colors. If you want a good color scheme, just rob T-Mobile colors. The pink and the black <laughs> and all that. <laughs> why, why not? Why? Because nobody's going to, first of all, people are going to be like, oh, this is like T-Mobile. Yeah, because I'm planning on being the T-Mobile of houses. I don't care. So if they mm -hmm. ask, right? so, so this, this helps you. Also, those colors will resonate in people's mind. As, I've seen those before. So now you're more familiar. But like, okay. they don't know why. They just know that like those colors are so highly branded that there's something about them that makes me want to go more to that. I don't know what it is because we're okay. getting these subliminal messages every day of like colors and styles and messages. And okay, the less I have to think, the more I want to go in that direction. It makes it easier. It's like a slippery slide. Like, you know. Sure, Sharon does not to interrupt you, Jason, but also on that color theme, wear clothes with the same colors. Wear the same yeah, clothes. Yeah, because yeah, I know a friend of mine was very successful on the shore. She had that hot blue, hot blue uh, whatever, gorgeous blue color clothes, and everyone Tiffany knew blue. she was coming. T Tiffany blue and, and T-Mobile pink or Fuchsia pink, whatever, those are yeah. hot colors for women, and they also stand mm -hmm. out on social media. So. Yep. Okay. Once you get that down and you find that, you find your colors on the color scheme, like you can just go on a color wheel and like look them up and like nail down that, that tone, then mm -hmm. every, your media should start being that. I remember simpler is better. Like I created, a, I, I, to be honest with you, I already created this whole thing for my wife. Basically the superhero, super mom buys houses and everything right off of that, right? I have it already. I did all the, the work. She kind of just dropped the ball and didn't want to do it anymore. Somewhere I have all that work, but I like I like that's the stuff I like to do. But for you, mm -hmm. you can do a similar thing. You play around with a logo, you play around with a superhero. It could be a house with a cape. It could be a sexy woman like the trucker babes kind of silhouette thing with a little cape and pink. And you can play around with that. But whatever okay. makes whatever makes you excited and remember. Like you're going to want to wear it on t-shirts and you want to be giveaways. So make it something that people are like, damn, I really like that. Like, it's so simple. Like, I don't feel like I'm wearing your advertisement. I feel like I'm wearing something stylish. So mm -hmm. the simpler you make it, the better, um, the better people are going to want to share it, put it out there more. Cause there's nothing worse than somebody's like, I buy houses, share my, you know, tell people I, I paid $500 referral fee. And it's like, who cares? But uh, mm -hmm. don't people will share and be like yeah i really dig that and like you know inside of that is we you know uh, in the comments yeah i paid 500 for referrals that's going to do a lot bigger than just on the nose that not not that you should never do it you should remind people every once in a while but just make it in a cool fancy you know visual kind of way where you can play with it and not just be banging them over the head with you know i'm a wholesaler like i buy houses like that yeah, and it's like, so what? I mean, you know, what, exactly. what separates you from all the other, you know, schmucks out here? Yeah. You know, <laughs> I'll, tell you, I'll tell you some of the stuff I, I, I used to do. I, and it, and it, I would put them on Craigslist and I would get the funniest, like people would share it because it was just funny. So I made, um, remember that song by Adele? Hello? Mm -hmm. I, made, I made, instead of making a Craigslist, ad about houses i made a i made a, a a variation on that song with lyrics about a, a house and more people laughed and shared that thing than i would have imagined and then i also did one <laughs> it was i hope i don't offend anybody but it was about like this bisexual house it was funny though like i just made it in a way <laughs> where it was just like i don't turn down any offers like you know it was kind of like a slutty house and it was just this, it was just written as if like I was like trying to get some boot, like I was trying to sell some. <laughs> and that was another one. People were like, you're retarded. I'm just like, it just made me laugh. So every once in a while, just do something weird and funny like that because people will remember that more than anything, more than just your plain vanilla day. And we're not always, 
we're not always going to have this this muse. We're not always going to come up with like a funny thing. But the more you try, the more you just take a shot and be like, you know, this made me laugh, so I'm going to share it. Mm-hmm. it. You'll be surprised how many fans you get from that that you just rolled the dice. You might piss a few people off too, who you know, hey, you know, you know? Cares. but. When people start to see that you think like that, that you're just not going to just talk about houses all the time. Okay. Surprise how many people latch on to that. Or just even the story of a house. Like, it could be about a house, how a house, the story of a house that, like, had a family and now it's time to, you know, be, go to another family because maybe they got old and maybe they raised kids. That kind of stuff lasts. And you can use it over and over again. Okay, so let me just throw this out here. Um, one of the reasons why I'm definitely so passionate about it is that my, my own father, he had come up on hard times and he was just going to walk away from his house. Now, this is before I was actually in it, but I was like, dad, you can't do that. Why would you let, let me find, let, let me find an investor for you. Long story short, found an investor, bought the house. He wound up you know, eliminating his debt, walked away for $100,000. So I was just kind of thinking, how can I share that? Or is that too hokey? Or, you know, how would that actually work? I would break it up in pieces and make it a series, like over 10 posts. And like, you know, document it like you just said, write it like a story. I mean, go make a Google Doc, put all the points in, play with it, and maybe break it up into 10 posts because... What ends up happening with that is you can link each one to each other and then the people that like one might go back and forth in the order of things kind of like what people do with with youtube videos they make series Mm -hmm. out of them so don't Mm -hmm. think of it as one thing think of it as a bunch of little micro pieces of content because people are going to resonate with that story and the more that people share it the more it helps your engagement and people get to know you and what your heart truly is because Mm -hmm. and i and i mentioned this your why Like that sounds like a lot about that. That might not be your complete why, but that is Mm -hmm. a story about why you do what you do. And, you know, nobody cares. Like, oh, I want to, my big why is I want to, you know, spend more time with my family. Who cares? We all do. My my reason why I sell houses is I want to empower people to get affordable housing. So who cares? Everybody does. Like Mm -hmm. nobody cares about that. No, my, the reason why I started I'm going to tell you the story about how I started and, you know, why I started doing what I started doing. And you tell this story and you just find places to cut it. Like, you know, make a, like a, I don't know, 50 words per post, but leave them on a cliffhanger to lead to the next one. And then save all those Facebook posts or whatever, Instagram posts, save the link for each one, like in a document and then Mm -hmm. link people back to it. Like, you know, the first one is this, right? And then Mm -hmm. the next one. If, if you want to, if you tell the story, if you want to see the first part to this, here's the link. And it goes back to that Facebook post with the original one. So now they have a trail to follow. And then in the third one, it's like, what, 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 what came before this is this link. And then the first part of the story is the bottom. And you see what I'm saying? You're creating this mm-hmm. long line of a we buy houses. And in each one of those even, take a picture that means that relates to that particular phrase in that post. I tell you what, if you put time into this, you know, some real time into this, have mm-hmm. a picture that's pertinent to that post, put your little branding on the corner of each picture, like, you know, Mind Vice Houses with your little website. And each one of those pictures is part of that story. And each one of those pictures goes with a piece of that story. And you link all of those back to each other. You'll probably have something that pays off over the long run. And okay. it'll, it'll probably, like I said, it'll take a while, but if people, people start to find it and like it, and share like that and you ask a question at the end of each part of those things it's like what would you do or how how would you feel if this happened to you or whatever like inside of those posts like at the end of each part of your story like you end with that question and Mm -hmm. that picture and that picture that goes with that you know it could just be any picture you could take it off the stocking that picture that goes with that question and that branding i think you have something great there you'll have something that's basically a blog post that just keeps going okay and then just save all those save all those pieces those pieces of content and then take that and then if you want to make a blog post you just copy all those those posts you did and put them in a blog post why not 
and make a video okay. about each one. This is like never ending content, but it's also your why. But the more mm -hmm. you develop that story, the closer you get to resonating with people and getting an emotional response, because I guarantee that something, even in you writing that, if you mm -hmm. start to cry anywhere where you're writing that, you're onto something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So any, anything in there that triggers an emotion, mm -hmm. grab mm -hmm. onto mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. try to consolidate it, ask a question in your mind. It's like, how did I feel? What made me cry about that, right? And then mm -hmm. that's the question you ask at the bottom because you're going to trigger something in somebody and that's what you want, that emotional response. That's going to get powerful. And you never know who's going to share this thing and going to appreciate that and how people are going to, even if you don't even see any reactions or likes, just do it for the exercise because okay. one day somebody's going to tell you, yeah, I remember that thing you wrote. And even though I didn't really react to it or anything like that, that stuck with me. It happens to me all the time. Okay. Thank you so much. No problem. So guys, I got a boogie because this play this lasted way longer than I'm supposed to, but I think it was valuable and I hopefully you guys did too. And you can kind of come back to this and say, hey, yeah, I, I was I, I really dug that. That helped me a lot. And I'm always available for consultations if you feel like you really need it. But you know, whatever. Just uh don't be afraid to reach out to me if you need anything. I'm like I said, I got a lot of experience, especially in the real estate sort of market with branding and now with uh, tech space. And also, now that I'm saying it. If you guys happen to know anybody, friends, family, who has like a tech idea that they were working on, that they got stuck on, that they don't know where to take it from there, and they're not afraid of working with somebody who, like me, will, you know, I'm looking to partner with people. The company's looking to partner with people. We're not in here to like make a loan or anything like that. We want to take this to, from seed to, to delivery, like out in the real world. It's, it's something that could change the world. We're definitely interested. I Remember, have something, Jason. Oh, Perfect. Yeah. Reach, reach out to me. Yeah, well, let's chat. Can we chat like offline? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to, I'll put my Facebook link inside the uh, chat and you could just friend me on there and we can start that way. How's that? Sounds good. Okay, let me do that real quick. Do you develop apps, by the way? Do you do, you do that? Yeah, actually, US. Oops, sorry about that. US Housing Exchange. I'm on the board of that one. It's USHX. You can find it. Um, it's a real estate app. Um, I had a couple failed attempts and now I'm working on one that has to do with trash elimination. So oh. that's kind of like, that's kind of like my, my big world changing one right now. And then I'm trying to I'm actually have a meeting with a kid at about two o'clock to help him with his, him and his aunt. So, oh, nice. you know, okay. yeah, um, yep. I, I put my, I put my, um, I put my Facebook uh, link in the chat. So just friend me on there, send me a message and we'll go from there and I'll, I'll basically, you know, tell you how to submit submit the idea and then get on the schedule and it's a whole process behind it. But uh, if got it's it. something you got or somebody you got, I'm definitely willing to, in, you know, interested in. Yeah, I start. We started it. this this process last year. Three friends, two friends of mine and I, and they kind of like fell along the wayside. And I'm still interested in pursuing it. So I thought since you offered, if we had an idea tech based, that mm -hmm. um, I'd bring it up to you. Yeah, I, I um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll chat on that. So that's it for me, guys. I'm gonna um, just gonna wrap this one up, and uh, I'll see you guys on the next one. If I, if you guys downloaded the ebook, then I'll have your email, and then I'll shoot you the replay link. And you also have the uh, YouTube channel in the chat box there to mm -hmm. just go subscribe to. Then they'll also be uploaded there. Probably this one will be uploaded tomorrow or sometime over the weekend. And then just you know, hopefully I see you guys again on the next one. Awesome. All right. Thanks Thank so much. You, nice right, meeting guys. everyone. Right, Bye now. Same here. Bye-bye. Talk to you soon.